Joining us right now for more on all of it is St. Louis Fed President Jim Bullard. Also, our very own senior economics reporter Steve Leisman is here. And uh, President Bullard, thank you for joining us today. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Happy to be here. Let, let's talk a little bit about the Fed's actions. They, they are extreme. It is more than we saw back in 2008 and 2009 during the financial, uh, the great economic recession, great recession uh, that we were watching. But I, I saw an interview with Alan Blinder this week in the Wall Street Journal, and he said, yeah, it, it's more, but it needs to be more because this is worse than what we were dealing with back in 2008 and 2009. Do you agree? Now, I would say it's different uh, than 2008, 2009. That was a financial crisis that originated on Wall Street and reverberated around the world. This is a known shock, a health shock uh, pandemic. Uh, I think everyone knows the drill here. We need to uh, stay home. Uh, we need to stay away from our businesses for a while in order to invest in the national health. So in some ways, this is easier to map than the, than the 2007 to 2009 financial crisis. I think our main goals here, and I think we are succeeding so far anyway, stay out of financial crisis and stay out of depression uh, while you're trying to deal with this pandemic. And that so far, I think the response has been good. And I think the understanding at a general level is very good about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to ask people to stay home, get the pandemic under control, and gradually reopen as we, in a healthy way, uh, so that we can uh, keep the disease under control. We saw what Eamon was just reporting, just the results of the surveys that he's been watching in, in, in some of these swing states, where people are starting to feel less concerned about their, their own health and safety, their family's health and safety, and more concerned about the economic pain they may be feeling at this point. Is that what you're hearing from constituents in your district? Uh, I would say they're very concerned about their the economic situation. A lot of these entities don't have any revenue at all during the shutdown, um, and it's pretty hard to survive and thrive uh, when your revenue stream is cut off. And you know, many people will tell me, uh, CEOs, and but but also uh, people from nonprofit entities. You know, I can go 90 days, or, you know, maybe 120 days if I know that on the other side I'll be able to start up again. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what you really want to get is the idea that, uh, okay, we're going to um, provide relief uh, to, for the pandemic, uh, and then we're going to have risk management to handle the disease uh, once the initial shock is over. Uh, we have risk management on many types of mortality risk uh, around the economy. Uh, we're going to have to do that here as well. Uh, you know, we've got terrorism risk. Uh, we've got automobile accident uh, risk. We have ways of mitigating those risks. We're going to have to do the same thing here. Um, but the, the shutdown can't go on forever because if it does, uh, you know, deep into the second half, I mean, um, then I think you, you risk getting into a financial crisis or even a depression scenario. And if you got into that, I think, you know, even health outcomes would be way worse if you got into that kind of thing. So hopefully we're staying away from that so far. I think we've been successful with our Fed program so far. And I think the fiscal program has been appropriately sized so far. and We're getting relief to people in the right way. Steve? Hey, uh, Jim. Yeah, uh, I want to ask about that outlook that you have there. Our CNBC rapid update, Jim, shows up. Average forecast for a 34% decline in GDP in the second quarter. But I'm more interested in the third quarter, which sees a 15% bounce back and then a 13% bounce back. We don't get it all back for the year. It's still down. But I want to know, is that your base case, that there is a reasonably strong uh, bounce back in the third and fourth quarters? Yeah, I think, well, of course, nobody knows at this point uh, exactly what's going to happen. But I, I've long maintained that the main impact here will be in the second quarter, the negative impact. You know, we're going to see uh, crazy ADP numbers uh, today, and and uh, jobs report will probably be one of the wor uh, worst ever on Friday. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of expected because you're using the unemployment insurance program uh, to provide pandemic relief. That's exactly what we want to do. We ask people to stay at home to invest in national health. And now, uh, you know, we want to try to keep them whole through this uh, through this period here. 
And then I think in the third quarter, it'll be a transition quarter, but I would expect a, a relatively rapid growth. And then hopefully by the time we get to the fourth quarter, we'd be, we'd be finishing up this process. So I, I still think there's a good chance that that's basic scenario will play out. Certainly if you look at China, uh, they had, you know, very bad uh, first quarter and then, you know, growth rates are very high in the, in the second quarter and uh, they have to adapt and uh, when they're opening up to a new situation. But, but I think that can all be managed. Jim, do you have enough uh, firepower in place right now to see it through? Or are you already thinking about whether or not the Federal Reserve needs to do more than it's already put in place? Uh, I, I would think these 13-3 programs are exceptionally powerful. Um, that's not something the FOMC does. That's the Board of Governors and the Treasury Secretary has to sign up. But for this shock, it's been very clear that we want to use those programs and use them effectively. Uh, I think we've moved into the areas that <clears throat> probably make the most sense here, uh, at least initially. Uh, but we could do more uh, if, if, uh, if necessary in that area. Um, I think the goals there are to provide market functioning, price discovery, make sure you don't get a freeze up uh, in, in markets, uh, because that could make the situation uh, much worse. So, so far, so good there. I think we've, uh, our liquidity measures are, are, are looking good, uh, certainly better than they were three or four weeks ago. Hey, Jim, you've been so bullish in terms of, of this recovery. I'm curious what you think the unemployment picture looks like in terms of this recovery. So what employment looks like in the third quarter, what employment looks like in the fourth quarter. And the reason I'm asking about it is because obviously the numbers are going to be so large, but also because you do hear from business leaders today, sometimes publicly, but definitely privately, that they're realizing that they can trim some of their payrolls and still do the business uh, that they always did, that this entire experience has actually try, it forced them to be more efficient or at least uh, made them aware that they could be, and what that means longer term for the employment picture. Yeah, uh, the unemployment rate is going to be extremely high. Uh, we think, you know, 20 percent isn't unlikely, uh, could even be higher than that. Uh, you've also got this PPP program, which has encouraged um, uh, firms to keep their workers on their payrolls, even though they're not really not doing uh, that much business. And so in a way, that's that's just a different avenue to provide the unemployment insurance. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising. Uh, it's a pandemic. It's a shutdown situation. Right. We needed to get the pandemic under control. And then, of course, well, you have to uh, you have to help these workers that have been asked to stay to home. Me. But Sorry. what? Jim, but what percentage of those what percentage of those jobs, I don't want to say are lost forever, but are, are lost for a longer term than just this quarter or the next quarter as a restaurant is trying to come back online? I'm talking about jobs that may not come back or may not come back immediately because business leaders are, are saying we're going to do it more efficiently going forward. What's that fourth well, that quarter would be, employment picture? That would be like productivity improving. Uh, I, you know, I, they have to make their management decisions. And if they were running something that was uh, not a lean operation, then this might be the catalyst to get them to move to something leaner. I'm not so sure that uh, uh, successful businesses uh, weren't already doing that uh, ahead of this. Uh, but, you know, maybe there was some of that uh, going on and, and those guys will be uh, uh, come around to the idea that they can uh, they can improve productivity. Uh, I think there'll be other adjustments uh, going on because the post uh, COVID uh, economy will will the vaccine won't be around uh, for quite a while. And in fact, I don't think we should count on uh, a vaccine. I think we should count on risk management as a way to handle the uh, uh, the virus in the future. And so the work environment will be different. Uh, than it was, right. and, and what, what counts what for kind productivity of, what kind of than it was. Right. I'm sorry to interrupt. What, what kind of unemployment rate are you looking at really quickly in the fourth quarter? Uh, I think it can come down under double digits uh, by the by the end of the year. Um, I don't see any reason why uh, you have to continue to use this program uh, once you get past the initial shock. 
So the, I think this is a case where uh, unemployment goes way up and then comes down pretty sharply. Now it's me. Uh, thank you, Jim. Stay with us. And we're going to get okay. a, a data point here. Uh, it's time for the ADP private payroll report. Steve Leisman probably already has the number, but uh, he's not going to give it up to us for like two and a half seconds. Steve. Are we good? There we go. 20,236,000 ADP payrolls reporting that 20,236,000 jobs were lost in the month of April. An historic, expected, still sobering and very disheartening number coming out. They revised down the uh, March payrolls by 122,000, uh, 249,000. Looking at the different sectors, good services, good sectors down by 42 million service sector down by 16 million that 20.2 million it's in line with the 21 and a half million total job losses expected to be reported on friday that's the wall street consensus and this number today is uh is pretty much in line with the number that had been expected by wall street i hate to say this plus or minus 2 million now let's take a look at by size and what's really interesting to me is how aggressive large businesses appear to have been in laying off workers, 9 million workers for large business, 5.3 million for medium-sized business, and 6 million for small. Uh, there was no program for the middle group. There will be a program for the larger group. There has been a program for the small business. I don't know, and we don't know if that's had much of an effect. Now, looking at by category, leisure hospitality, 8.6 million. That's the hardest hit. That's the sector you would expect to be hardest hit. Trade and transport, 3.4 million. Construction also hard hit along with manufacturing and professional and business services. So uh, I guess I'll toss it back to Joe, I think, here um, with these numbers that basically set us up for what we thought. And Joe, all you can hope, I suppose, is what uh, President Bullard said is accurate, that it's a sharp decline in job losses and then a quick bounce back. Yep, Steve. Let's uh, let's let's see what uh, President Bullard uh, thinks about this. We'll bring back in St. Louis Fed President uh, James Bullard uh, for some reaction. And and I, I guess just in the backdrop, I want you to think of the answer to this question: uh, Are you fully a big time MMT or now? Is, is everything going to be fine? We'll just do whatever we need to do. Have you adopted that uh, that stance? Oh, great! I, I have to react to the the outsized job numbers and the MMT at the same time. <laughs> well, just think about it. Think about your answer uh, for that. But what what I don't think there are any great surprises in in what you're seeing. You've been talking about just what what we saw in in, uh, in vivid uh, full color uh, on what we yeah. saw. So um, you can comment on. I, it was interesting that, that big employers, maybe big employers do have more fat uh, that, that can cut without negative consequences in small firms. Yeah, I, uh, this number is not a surprise. Uh, we had a blog uh, post, uh, which your viewers can check out, a uh, back of the envelope calculation on uh, unemployment rates. Uh, we said something like 47 million uh, workers are in high contact industries. So if you're going to shut down uh, the economy on that aspect, uh, you've got a lot of workers at risk. So you've got 20 million here. Um, uh, so you're quite a ways uh, toward that 47 million. You've got others are staying on payrolls because of that PPP program. And uh, you might have other firms that uh, want to keep their workers uh, for, uh, for other reasons or because they got a loan or something. So uh, there's no question uh, this is very, very disruptive. And we expect uh, a very sharp increase in unemployment, a very sharp job loss. Uh, but we understand the shock. We understand what we're doing here. I think everyone gets to the program. We have to invest in the national health and get to the other side of this crisis. So, Steve, the, the futures are, you know, single. They're, they're not double or they're not up over 100 anymore. They're only up about 66 points. If it, I don't. I just can't imagine that it's because of that number. I mean, obviously, it, it, it coincided with that. But if it had been 18 million, you'd think we'd be up over 200. I, I just, it just doesn't seem like it's. That's not I, what we're I, keying on. I think off you're of. right, Joe. I think. I, I think it's like a big splotch, and and if it's this big or that big, it doesn't really matter all that much. If it was 24 million, I wouldn't expect them to yeah, sell but off. It, In but fact, it's we a think big, the number could be but more it's like just 30. Ugly. It, you just looking at it makes you feel like yeah, it's sick. just ugly. Yeah. Right. Hey, if, if I could just ask Jim one, yeah, one more on. question here. 
Uh, Jim, Jim, there's uh, uh, two questions that are out there about Fed policy. One is you really haven't announced a formal quantitative easing program. <clears throat> I wonder if that's because of the idea that really standard or, or conventional monetary policy, which is low interest rates and QE, if I could call it that, aren't really having a lot of effect when the economy is shut down. And, and, and the question is, are you holding that back in your back pocket for stimulus for the rebound? The second question is, have you guys thought about yield curve control? Yeah, those are, I would say those are kind of related. I, I don't think that the current environment is really one where uh, you have the sensitivity to Fed policy on interest rates the way you would in a more normal functioning. I mean, it's, this is all about the virus right. and it's all about the shutdown policy. And we do have the policy rate very low and, and rates are, are expected to remain low for quite a while. And I think that's all very appropriate. But I don't think you're going to get back to that kind of sensitivity until the second half of the year. And then at that point, I think we could articulate uh, more about forward guidance in that aspect. Hey, Jim, I, I think it was might have been a guy from uh, Guggenheim. Might have been. It was somebody anyway that said that the balance sheet now, I don't know, what is it? It's gone up to like nine trillion or something. That the Fed will never be the same ever again. Never, never be able to. to I mean, if we thought it was the Roach Motel you couldn't get out of last time, um, I don't know what you'd call it this time. Is it? Is this going to be a, something we're dealing with for the rest of our our lives, even if we live to be really old? Well, if you look at the major central banks, ECB, uh, BOJ, um, U.S., Fed, uh, Bank of England, their balance sheets have all been creeping up uh, over the last 10 or 15 years uh, in reaction to the global financial crisis. Uh, that hasn't turned out to be uh, producing very much inflation. And so uh, it does look like we're, we're generally speaking, going to have larger balance sheets than we would have had pre-2007. Uh, um, I do think uh, some of these programs will be reversed uh, after the pandemic goes away, so it will come down uh, some. But it's definitely a, a large balance sheet world compared to the pre-2007. Okay, good. So you, that is a yes to you are a full-on mmt or now. That basically you thought about it and, and gave, <laughs> me the, gave me the affirmative? <laughs> Uh, I think the Fed controls inflation. Uh, I think there are limits to how much you can borrow. Uh, but uh, I think we're, we're re-examining all our theories about right. uh, where we think those limits really are. There's a, like that. You know what? I've heard this like a thousand times in the last month. You got a great plan until you get punched in the face. I don't think Mike Tyson knew that every person in the world was going to use that, that, that line. And it, it's so true, though, right? I mean, God, everything was going wrong until... You know, until you just get the daylights knocked out. I agree more. I think that's one of the great quotes of uh, it, it of the is, last right? uh, 50 years. I, I don't know about the, the, the ink on the face and everything, though. Uh, I can't say I, and I don't want to own a tiger either. Anyway, thank you. I'm not the Tiger King. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Paul. We appreciate it.